This is our Nissan SR20 DET that we're gonna build to make a ton of power. We have a bunch of parts laid out on the table, so let me show you what we're gonna use. SR20s, of course, are closed deck aluminum blocks, but they do have sleeves in them, so we replaced our sleeves with a fresh set of Darden stock bore sleeves. These are much better than the crusty sleeves that were in here. When we got this block, it didn't have any main caps at all, so we threw on a set of billet main caps by Mazworks, as well as a billet cradle and Mazwork main studs. For the rotating assembly, we have a Brian Crower stroker crankshaft, so this is a 91 millimeter stroke, which is sick. We have a boost line, I-beam fully forged connecting rod, and a custom Wiseco forged piston to make it all work together. We have an ACL bearing set, so that's mains, rods, and thrust, and then we have a ton of OEM parts. So rear main housing, all the timing guides, new hardwares, the timing chain kit, we've got a lower gear, and we've got a Mazworks mechanical timing chain tensioner, which is a good upgrade over the stock one. We also have a Nissan master engine gasket set. We're gonna be running an Apex head gasket, we're gonna be running the engine in on some 1040 Motul break-in oil, which is a really good oil to run an engine in on the first time. And then once it's broken in, we're gonna to switch to a 10 weight 40 300V racing engine oil. So when we actually start making power, we're gonna be running it on this. We've done a ton of work on the cylinder head. We've got a port and polish on the intake and the exhaust side, as well as new valving. We also have a Brian Crower spring set with a new titanium retainer on as well. For camshafts, we went with the Brian Crower Stage 3. So this is a big boy camshaft over the stock one and we've got a fresh set of rockers and lifters, and we've fixed the rocker issue that the SR20 has. We'll review that when we start putting the head together. And we're gonna be running a Brian Crower cam gear set on our new Brian Crower cams. We also have some goodies by Platinum Racing Products here. So we have an intake stud, an exhaust stud, both of them are made out of titanium. We have valve cover dress up hardware, and we're gonna be running an R35 GTR ignition coil kit from Platinum Racing Products. We're of course gonna be running an entire Haltech standalone engine management system. So we have an elite series ECU here, as well as all the sensors to make it happen. We're gonna be running all of this through a wiring specialties custom harness. So the engine side is SR20, the chassis side is 300ZX, and the ECU side is Haltech, of course. We're also gonna be running our favorite turbo manifold and turbo combination, which is an Artec turbo manifold with a V-band Garrett G-Series turbo. So we have a G3770 here with an 8.3 AR. So this turbo is gonna be very happy, very spooly. It's gonna be very fun. It's gonna sound amazing. And we have a new GBW45 wastegate. We haven't played with one of these yet, so I'm very excited for it. We have a hyper-tuned intake manifold for the intake system, Dieschworks fuel injectors, an ATI super damper, and an action clutch going on out back. So we have some really cool parts for this build, so let's start getting this motor together. To start, we're gonna be checking our piston ring end gaps. We're probably gonna have to open these up because we're running some high boost, high power on this engine, so let's get started. And while Quinn's getting our piston ring set up, I'm gonna go ahead and toss some poor 15 engine enamel on this cast aluminum engine block. This is gonna make it look brand new and give Quinn a fresh slate to start putting all these engine parts in. So I just measured our end gap for our top compressor ring on cylinder one, and this is a set of feeler gauges I'm using to do it. We are currently at 12. 12 is actually a little bit tight. We need to be at 21, so we've got quite a bit of opening up to do on this ring. I've got a diamond tip ring cutter here, so we're gonna file it down until we get to our 21. So if you've never seen an engine get built before, what I'm doing is checking the piston ring end gaps. So this right here is a piston ring that sits inside the bore. So when the engine is assembled, the rings actually sit inside of these grooves on the piston. And this is what seals the piston inside of the cylinder. Because if we don't have rings, you see all this play. So when you have combustion in here, the gases can bypass all that and the rings are actually expanding into the bore to prevent that from happening and sealing the piston. Now, if you look in the piston ring, when I I get it sitting flush like that we have a little tiny gap in there and that is our piston ring end gap so when you have metals that are getting hot you have aluminum you have steel on the bore and steel on the ring when you introduce heat the rings everything expands the aluminum expands the steel expands and so this little gap in here is meant to take up the expansion so when the engine gets hot the rings swell up and that gap closes now when you start introducing more power into the system and trying to make more horsepower you will actually increase the amount of heat that the engine outputs. When you have a lot of heat and a small ring gap or a stock size ring gap, the ring will actually expand so much that it touches itself, the gap will close completely and the ring will touch. And that is a really bad place to be for a performance engine or any engine in general, because when you run out of gap for that to expand into, it can't expand into that any further. So if it continues to heat up, the ring is gonna start pushing against itself and it's gonna blow out the ring lands on your piston. And this is one of the failure points on a stock engine 
tension when you're talking about, oh, how much power can a stock engine take? One of the critical factors is ring gap. So when you're building a performance engine, one of the things you do is you open up the ring gap. That allows the piston and the cylinder to deal with excess heat and handle more heat. So that's what we're doing here. So I just checked it again and we're not quite at 17. So we've still got to open it up more. Our number we're going for for the top ring is 21.021 and we're currently less than 17. So we've got some work on to do. I finished cylinder one, so our top ring is 0.021 for gap, and our second ring is 0.022. So cylinder one is finished. We've got three more ring sets to do for two, three, and four, and once we're finished, we're gonna start assembling our pistons and rods. Now it's time to assemble our pistons and our connecting rods. Now, most factory piston and rod setups are all press fit, so the machine shop would really have to do it, but on a forge setup like these JE pistons, we get to do them in-house, which is really cool. So first thing first, we have a wrist pin. So this is what actually holds the connecting rod and the piston together. And we wanna make sure that the bore inside of the piston is nice and smooth. We don't have any birds or anything that's gonna get this caught up. So the wrist pin does swing and the rod swings around in the piston. We wanna make sure that runs nice and smooth in there. And the same thing with our connecting rod. So we're gonna check the small end bushing and it's got some nice movement to it it spins freely which is good so this actually gets held in by two circlips so i have a circlip here you can see the little groove inside the piston and we're going to put a circlip in and then we're going to slide the wrist pin through with the rod and then we're going to put the other circlip in on the other side and that's how it keeps it all retained now these pistons do have an intake and an exhaust side because the intake valves are bigger on this engine than the exhaust valves are so we're going to put the little bearing tang which are those guys right there on the connecting rod on the exhaust side and now we just got to lube everything and put it together. These pistons and rods and rotating assembly, in fact, was actually balanced at the machine shop. So we do have specific pistons. So this is uh, piston one and this is rod one. So we've got the rod weight on there, which is really cool. So let's put these together. There is one piston and rod. And luckily the SR20 is a four cylinder, so we only have three more to do. You guys have seen me build a ton of engines here in house and Nate is our social media manager and he's usually behind the camera and I think we're gonna let him have a whack at putting this piston together. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a shot. He was seeing me struggle with the circlips because these suckers freaking suck. I've you watched know, Quinn like, do this a number of times with like the RB, the 2J, the 4G was the first one. And I don't know, it doesn't seem too difficult. So I'm going to give it a shot. It's pretty simple process. There's circ clip, wrist pin, connecting rod and piston. So let's give it a shot. Let's see what you got, it's dude. All, what, what do you think I got? You believe in me, Ricky? You think I, I got this? It. I think you got it. All right, all right, all right, all right. I don't think you do this fast as Quinn, but I think you can do it. No, yeah. no, no, but I, I think you got it for sure. All right, let's try it out. You think I got it? The first step is just make sure there's no burrs in the piston or on the wrist pin. It might be a burr here. It's like, oh, that's pretty smooth. Yeah. What do you think? You yeah, good with good. that, Quinn? Yeah, that's solid. All right. As long as the slide's nice. Oh. That's good. So it's a little hard to get in, but... Well, once you get it, it lined up, it's Yeah, tight. it moves yeah. smooth, so... This is tough. Wow. I don't know how you did this so quick. Oh, that hurt. Dude, it just, it wants to pop out. It's a fight. No, I had it. You almost had me. You never had me. Ugh, I'm getting beat up. My thumbs feel it. This is tough. No, no. Ow, get in there. It keeps popping out. Ladies and gentlemen, don't try this at home. It's almost there. Is that it? Dude, no. I think defeat is settling in. Dude, I might not be able to do this. All right, Quinny, I'm sweating over here. This is tough. You got it. Quinn just did that in like 25 seconds. Yeah, it sucks though, huh? I give Quinn props. Guys, this is not easy. This is hard. All right, so now, Nate, because you're still putting this together. So the eye, that's the intake side. This other side is the exhaust side, right? So you want the tangs on the rod on the exhaust side. Got So tangs are there, eyes here. All righty. All right, lube it up, put it together, brother. Okay. 
get her all wiped down. You try to wipe this grease off before throwing in that second circlet. You just toss her in. It's gonna be real slippery now. No! <laughs> Dude, it's almost there. No! This is very fun, but very difficult. Dude, it's like 80% there. No, I don't wanna let it go. The it's last, gonna, the last 10%, it's gonna tool. pop use out. The pry tool. Use the blue pry tool and just push it in the last. No! Gonna commit. Oh yeah, baby. Here she goes. Yeah! I did it! That feels good. Hell yeah. We did it. I've never done this before. This is really cool. Our pistons and connecting rods are done and they're pretty much ready to go in the engine, but the engine is not ready to receive pistons yet. So next up, we're gonna be specking the bearings on our crankshaft. Now, I expect this to go extremely well because we have freshly machined billet main caps and we have a brand new crankshaft from Brian Crower. So we've got standard size bearings for the main and the thrust. We're just gonna double check everything with plastic gauge, but it should be spot on. So let's check it. So to start, we're gonna clean off the bearings on the crankshaft, because a lot of times these cranks will have oil on them for transport so they don't rust. And we want this thing bone dry to check our clearances. So as far as they're kind of funky, we gotta drop the crank in and then we can put our thrust washers in. Usually I'll put the thrust washers in the block first, but I just tried that and one of them fell out, which sucks. So we gotta put it in after the crank goes in. But this crank looks freaking sick, man. We're gonna plastic gauge the mains right now. If they're good, then we'll assemble it with lube and then check the rest. So I just got our main caps back off with our plastic gauge on and we've got some good squish. So what plastic gauge is, for those of you who don't know, it's a little green strip like that. And when you put it on a bearing journal and you put the cap on and tighten it down and torque it, it will actually squish it. So if you notice, that's it squished, that's it not squished and brand new. So if it's got a tighter clearance, it, the squish will be wider. And if it's got more clearance, more clearance for oil, if it's a bigger gap, the squish will be less. So that's what we're measuring for this. And there are multiple ranges. So this is green plastic gauge. There's like blue plastic gauge and they're all for different sizes. But anyway, we've got it squished down. So this is the little piece of paper that the plastic gauge comes in. And this is your reading here. So the first green is 001 which is a thousandth of an inch. And then the white is 0015, which is 15 10 thousandths. And then the second green one down is 2000. So we're gonna put it right up against our squish here. And if we notice it's bigger than the 2000 mark, and if we go down, it is kind of closer to the 15 10 thousandths mark, which is fine. So the bearing spec for this is pretty close to what we're at. And this reading is also super consistent for every single journal we check here. So they're all even, and this is exactly what I was looking for. And I thought we were gonna find, cause this, again, is a fresh block that's been machined with new main caps, and this is a brand new crankshaft, so I wouldn't expect that to be out very much at all. I'm very happy with our bearing clearance. Everything looks really good, so now we're gonna clean all the old plastic gauge off, lubricate this, and do the final assembly on it, and then we'll check our end thrust. Crankshaft is fully installed with lube in it and it feels really nice, really smooth. There's a huge block brace in the way so I can't like really spin it by hand that nicely. It feels really good. So now we're gonna check the end thrust. All right, so we've got our dial indicator set up on the end crank here, as you'll notice. So when the crank moves, it's actually gonna move this little dial indicator. So we're checking thrust now. Now keep in mind this engine is assembled with lube in it. So we're gonna load it all the way up. So I've already zeroed it out at full left and we're gonna push the crank right and it's gonna walk about 3,000. So you can see that that is our end play in our crank with lube and that's pretty good it's a little tight but i think it'll be plenty and if i recall it's still within spec so that's good we have end play we have enough end play so the crank's good that's it we're dialed in so now we're going to take it off of the stand here because i want to put the rear main seal on we also have a couple of plugs to put in gallery plugs and such and then once that's done we'll get it back on the stand here and start dropping pistons in <music> Thank you.
Our rear main seal housing is installed and I've used a form in place gasket. So we gotta let it sit for like 15 minutes before we tighten it down. In the meantime, we've got a ton of gallery plugs that we need to install. All of these were pulled out for service when they cleaned the engine block. Usually gallery plugs are like press fit, but the SR has a ball threaded tapered plug, which is pretty cool. Thread sealant stick right here. We're gonna use this to seal it up. So we've got three on the backside here. We've got one big one here. We've got a couple over here. And then I've got a couple on this backside of the engine block. Next up, we are gonna be putting our pistons and rods inside the engine. Now to do that, we need to start by putting our piston rings onto our piston, and then we can start dropping these in the hole. So this bottom ring is an oil control ring, and it's got three little rings in it actually. It's got the wave ring, which is the first ring I put on, and then it's got a lower ring that goes below that, and then it's got a ring that goes above that. So another thing is when you're orienting rings, the piston manufacturer will actually give you a sheet telling you where the end gaps of the ring need to go. So oil expander rings, I've got one down here, which is right here. And then we need to put another one up here, higher up. So that ring gap's gonna be right about there. And then we'll walk that ring right around. Moving on to compression rings. So I actually have a little tool that's gonna help us put these on because they're nice and brittle. So we're gonna expand it and drop our ring over. Here's our top compression ring, making sure they spin nicely in their grooves, which they do. So now we're gonna reorient them correctly. This is our piston installer tool, and we gotta make sure she's nice and lubed up. So this tool is actually going to compress the rings as we slide the piston on, so they don't get caught by the block. So just like the mains, we're gonna be checking the rod bearings with some plastic gauge here. Again, this is a brand new crank and we're using brand new bearings. So everything bearing spec wise should be spot on, but I don't wanna assume it's right and then put the engine together and then find out because we have junk oil pressure that it's wrong. So it takes five minutes per one to check and it's super good insurance because if it's wrong immediately, I don't have to find out because the engine's in the car and together and running. I can just put it together and check it right now. So just like the mains, I got these torqued. So we're gonna loosen it. The rods are kind of trickier to do because you cannot let the crankshaft rotate. So if it rotates, it screws up the reading. So you're gonna have to go very slow and careful. And I've done that a few times where you spin the crank and then it screws everything up and then you gotta start over. It's not fun to do. All right, looks like a solid reading to me. And the number we're looking for is about two thousandths. That is perfect. So on the mains, we we're about 15, 10 thousandths. So the mains are tighter than the rods, which is kind of what I like to run. I like running uh, the rod bearing clearances a little bit looser than the mains. It just seems to work really well for the engines I put together. So that's freaking perfect. So I'm happy with that. So we're gonna clean it, clean the plastic gauge off here. Then we're gonna lube the bearing and put it together, torque it, and then cylinder one is done. Cylinder number one is in, rotates extremely smooth. We've got three more pistons to go. Rod bearing for cylinder number four is exactly the same as it was for cylinder number one, which is 2000s. That's perfect, so let's keep going. That's closer to about the same, which is two thou. We're spot on. Let's get this thing lubed up, get cylinder number three in. One more to go.
Last bearing, last one. Money. Let's lube it, put it back together, and then spin it. Our rotating assembly is complete, and this thing feels so smooth. It feels really good, actually. Like, really nice. I'm excited to get this motor in the car and running. It's gonna be really good. But look at that, dude. The gold piston's kind of nice, huh? Okay, so now the rotating assembly is completely finished, we can start dressing the engine. So we've got an oil block that needs to go on the side here that's gonna allow us to run our relocation kit and our oil cooler. We can put our water pump on, we can start putting our timing stuff on. There's actually a port, NPT port on the side here. We're gonna install our Haltech oil pressure sensor. Next up is our timing chain system, and this is the following guide. got a bunch of colored links here. That's our crank one, and our two cam ones are up here, different colors. So our crank guy is gonna go on a little mark right there, like that. Before we install our front timing cover, we're gonna be upgraded to a set of PRP billet oil pump gears. So these oil pump gears that are in here from factory are cast, and if you like two-step and bang the rev limiter and do all sorts of hooligan stuff with the engine, these like to crack. So we're gonna put a billet gear set in here. If you're wondering, here is how the oil pump works, right? So the oil pump is actually spins this way. So we have our pickup, which is here. So this guy goes into the sump and that feeds oil into this gallery here, essentially. So if you watch this space here, watch this little space here as it goes through its rotation, that space, as we spin the oil pump, gets bigger, right? And that is what creates a vacuum that sucks the oil out of the pan into the oil pump. Now, as that cavity expands, it gets bigger and it crosses into this section here, which this is our output section. So this is actually goes through this little channel here in the case and then out into the engine block. And now it's in this section, watch the, watch the displacement of this section here. It's actually decreasing in size. Ah, so that gets pushed out through the block. Yeah, so this end, as it's spinning, increases the displacement, which sucks the oil in, and then the other side squeezes the oil and pushes it out of the oil pump. And that's what makes it, that's what makes it pump. Let's get it back together, get it in the car. And this is the final piece. This is our drive gear for the oil pump. So this actually slides onto the crankshaft, is keyweighed, and the oil pump is gonna slide right over this, and this is what drives the gear on that. So now we can get our timing cover on, let's do it. So I'm waiting for our timing cover and oil pan to dry so we can start priming the oiling system on this, but we're gonna go ahead and get our damper on because now's a good time to do that. An upgraded damper is always good if you're gonna do a performance engine. This is gonna definitely help us with harmonics spinning at a higher RPM and high boost. So absolutely gotta have one of these. I've got our lower oil pan on, and before we put the upper oil pan on, or the little guy, uh, we're actually gonna prime the oil pump. So I've got a Motul break-in engine oil. This is a 10W40 break-in oil, and you wanna run a break-in oil when you start running an engine for the first time. That's a brand new motor, you don't want a synthetic. So we've got this, we're gonna pour it in the pump pick up here, spin the crank, and when oil starts coming out of here, then we'll be done and we can get our lower pan on. We've got 
oil coming out of our oil distribution block, which is perfect, exactly what we wanted. So I'm putting a baffle plate on and then our upper, our little guy, little pan, this guy can go on like that, glued, and then we'll be done with the short block. Our SR20 short block is officially complete. Next up, we gotta get the cylinder head on. So we're gonna drop the head gasket. We got an Apex Integrations head gasket and it's dropping the head on is gonna be kind of interesting because we've got the chains and all this stuff kind of sticking up. So I might have Ricky help me and assist on dropping the head. From there, we've got a Masworks head stud kit. So we're gonna drop the studs in, tighten the studs down. We're gonna drop our washers and our nuts on and then we're gonna torque this thing down and then we'll be ready to start tackling our valve train. Now that the cylinder head is torqued, we can actually start installing our valve train. So I've got a Starbucks cup full of lifters that I put in here like probably four or five days ago. So these guys have been bleeding for a few days, which is perfect. So we're gonna drop these in and then we've got our shims that are gonna be going on our Brian Crower valves and valve springs. So one of the things we actually did at the machine shop was put a guide shim on both sides of the rocker. So SR20s are notorious for spinning rockers at high RPM and high power. And the reason they do that is because they have a guide shim, which has little grooves on it like this to hold the rocker in place. So the rocker's kind of like that. And then the other one's just a normal shim. And if you get the shim incorrect, you'll kind of put a, a lateral load on the rocker. And then at high RPM, when you get a tiny bit of valve load, it like kicks the thing out. So one way to solve that is to put a guide shim on the left and the right valve spring. So we've had our uh, valve stem height tips actually machine to run with the guide shim and have us a level rocker which is really cool so it is the best way to fix this sr20 rocker setup but it is a very tedious thing to do so mike over at dsport actually handled that for us which is really cool so now all we have to do is put it together now i've been told once you put the lifters in and they're bled don't turn the motor upside down on an sr so we're gonna try and avoid flipping the motor completely which i think we can get away with here are our guide shims. We got them all brand new, 16 of them. Next up, we've got our Brian Crower camshafts. These are a stage three 272s. They're gonna sound epic and the thing's gonna make a ton of power. And what that number 272 stands for, if you don't know, is on a four stroke engine, you have the intake stroke, compression stroke, power, and exhaust. So you have two full rotations of the crankshaft or one full rotation of the crankshaft is 360 degrees, two rotations is 720 degrees. Now cam size specs and duration is actually measured in 720 degrees of crank rotation. So having a 272 camshaft means that 272 degrees of crankshaft rotation, the valves are opening, which is really cool. The S13 SR20 actually has a 240 degree duration camshaft. These are a 272. So that's about 30 something more degrees of rotation, which means we're gonna get a lot more airflow out of this motor, which is awesome. And we have a super slick port and polish. And also the rest of the valve train is Brian Crower. We have Brian Crower oversized valves, springs, titanium retainers, and these cams are gonna be wicked. This thing's gonna breathe like crazy. Let's get these on and torqued, get this thing timed. Brian Crower camshafts were fully installed and now we're gonna start getting our cam gears in and getting the same timed. However, these are adjustable cam gears and as always, we're gonna take the hardware's out. We're gonna lock tight them, get them back in the cam gear, get them nice and tight and get these in the motor.
We've got our cams on with the cam gears and the chain. We're all timed up, baby. Spins nice. All we need now is the valve cover. Here we have our valve cover. This has been repainted by Ricky to match uh, the subframe calipers and a whole bunch of other suspension components we got. So this is actually the R35 GTR Nissan Gold, which is really nice. So let's get it on. We have a very special hardware kit for this. Proud and Racing Products Dress Up Hardware Kit. Valve cover's on, we've got some cool bits on here. Everything has been converted to AN for crankcase ventilation. We have a radium push it fitting, which is really nice. And we're gonna be running a Platinum Racing Products R35 coil kit. I don't necessarily think we're gonna throw that on for the video, but we're gonna put our exhaust and our intake manifolds on, and we do have Platinum Racing Products titanium stud kits for the intake and the exhaust manifold, so let's get those on. Put the turbo manifold on next. I'm excited for this. Yes. Time for some Garrett action, brother. What do you think of that, Ricky? You ready? We're yeah. almost there, we're almost there. Here it is, baby. Ah. <laughs> G30 770. This is the new Garrett G-Series ball bearing turbo, and I'm stoked for it, because this thing is gonna be sick. We had a G25 on our R32, and it was the happiest little turbo ever. It was. That is gonna be it on our SR20. It is completely done. Now, of course, we still have to put this thing in the car and get it fired up. But as far as the lung block and the engine goes, we're completely finished. This thing turned out absolutely beautiful. It was an absolute blast to build. This was my first time building an SR20 and it is a very interesting and fun, neat little engine. I want you guys to comment down below what engine you want us to build here in house next. We've already done a 2J, we've done an RB, we've done an SR now, we did an H series. We've done quite a few. Do you guys wanna see a 13B? Do you wanna see an LS? Do you want to see a K-Series? There's a whole ton of JDM Legends and other engines out there that I do want to build. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. As always, don't forget to drop a like down below, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.